Hey, we're going to do one more song at this particular time, take a little short break, and then we're going to come back and look forward to singing some more for you here in just a bit. But um, I'm going to ask Jake to come around and do something. Um, I mentioned earlier that Jake, not only a great singer, but a songwriter too. And as gospel groups, as we travel and sing most of the time, uh, especially if you don't have a writer in the group, um, you guys get to hear the songs, but you never get to really meet the songwriters or hear the testimonies behind the songs. Uh, for instance, uh, the very first song we sang tonight, Come to the Water, that's written by the legendary songwriter, Mosey Lister, who wrote Till the Storm Passes By, and I'm Feeling Mighty Fine, Then I Met the Master, While Ages Roll, I mean, it just goes on and on and on, the songs that, that Mosey has written. And uh, oftentimes you guys get to hear those songs, but you don't get to hear the stories behind the song. Well, we're fortunate to have a songwriter in our group. And so before we do this song, I have asked Jake to come around and, and share a word of testimony with you folks and let you get to hear the story behind the song. All right. And, and I love it because uh, when we get a little insight like that, I feel like the song can bless us even that much more. So Jake, if you would come around and share a word of testimony, and then we're going to do It Wasn't Me. Thank you, Casey. Uh, I was born almost three and a half months premature. The doctor said I just couldn't wait to get out, and I got I got started early, and I just kept going. And I was pretty much I was diagnosed fairly early on. Uh, at, at first, they just thought I was crazy, and then they figured out when I was about three years old that I had what they call now ADHD. And they didn't have all that; they just said I was hyper back then. And so. Uh, my mom had a unique way of dealing. Eventually, I was put on medicine, and I got through school alive, which was a minor miracle. But before that, mom would get really frustrated. And, and you know what? My mother is a saint. It's a miracle that I'm here, I'll tell you that, because I was bouncing off the walls. And there were times that my mom, just could, she just couldn't take it anymore. And mom would go outside literally go outside, sit on the front porch, and lock me in the house. And just, she figured it was easier to clean up the mess when I was done than try to get me to stop. And she would just go and leave me. She called it her Jake break. I don't know if it's funny or not. I don't know how much I like that, but uh, that's, what, that's what she called it. And, and you know what made it weird, though, is that a lot of times she would actually leave me in the house with my little sister, which that was kind of weird, but uh, she would leave me, in, and no matter what, no matter how long she was out there, she was out there for five minutes, ten minutes, whatever it was, when she came in the house, the most commonly heard phrase from me was, it wasn't me. No matter what happened, she'd come in and I'd say, it wasn't me. She'd come in, she'd say things like, um, who spilled nail polish remover all over the brand new dining room table? took the finish right off it. And I'd say, wasn't me. <laughs> one, time, one time she came in, she went, who locked your little sister in the closet? <laughs> Apparently I was having a Tammy Joe break. I <laughs> but I, I said, it wasn't me. That's my sister's name. And then one time she came back in, I'll never forget this, when she came in, she said, um, who put the dog in the dryer <laughs> and turned it on? <laughs> and I... You put the dog in the dryer. <laughs> it wasn't me. No, it wasn't. No, no it was it, uh, it actually was me. That that was definitely me. Um, the dog was fine. I only had an on air dry. I didn't have the heat on. And she only went around like twice. That was it. She came out, she was fine. A little bit dizzy. But no static cling. <laughs> And she smelled spring fresh, so uh, it kind of worked out well. <laughs> it worked out, but I, every time I would say it wasn't me. Every time, and we we had the great uh, fortune not too long ago to uh, to visit Gaither Studios, uh, Bill Gaither's place. And when I was ten years old, my parents were there recording an album, and I was staying with my with my grandparents. And my grandparents went to church every chance they could get, and so they took us kids to revival. And so we were at this revival, I'll never forget it. It was a Friday night, and se September 21st, 1981. The, the pastor at Bible Land Baptist Church got up and preached on hell and said that hell is hot. Well, I told you a minute ago I was hyperactive, and when I was about eight years old, my hyperactive ADHD brain got away from me one time in a park. I ran into a grill, and I ended up with second and third degree burns 
all over the front of my body. And so I, I, I'm deathly afraid of fire. I can't, I can't stand to look at it. I don't want to be near it. I've got a fireplace in my house, and I guarantee it will never be lit. At least not while I'm home. Maybe when I'm on the road, but not when I'm home. So that night, the pastor preached on hell and said that hell is hot, and it's full of a burning fire. I got home that night um, to Allen Park with my grandparents. Grew up just south of Detroit, Michigan, and in Detroit, there's always a building burning somewhere. So on the news, they showed this building on fire, and it clicked for me that that's what hell is going to be like. And I said, Grandpa, I don't want to go there. And he said, well, son, you need to ask Christ to be the Lord of your life. And I heard the Holy Spirit, and I asked Jesus to be the Lord of my life. I got on my knees on that blue shag carpeting in Grandpa's living room, and he prayed with me, and my grandma prayed with me. And I asked Jesus to be my Savior. And I believe that day, September 21st, 1981, He saved me. But folks, I have to admit to you something, that I didn't... I would still let my hyperactivity get away from me, and I'd still do things I shouldn't have done. I, I remember talking to friends and getting mad and saying something and just cutting them to the quick with my words. And, and there was no way that I could look at them and say, it wasn't me that said that. that uh, with other friends in places I never should have gone to and things I never should have done. And there's no way I could look at the people around me and say, it wasn't me that was there. It wasn't me. I remember being just just sick, drunk as a kid. Just I couldn't even stand up. If, if I could have and pulled myself up off that bathroom floor and looked at myself in the mirror, there's no way I could have looked in that mirror and said, it wasn't me. But every time the Lord would bring to my mind an old rugged cross on a hill called Mount Calvary, and I would look at that cross in my mind's eye, and the first thought that would come to mind every time, it wasn't me. I'm so thankful for that tonight. This.